You probably already know that XLOOKUP is Excel's new lookup function, and it's making VLOOKUP a thing of the past. But do you know everything that XLOOKUP can do? Well, in this video, we're going next level and looking at 10 examples of XLOOKUP so you get to master your data and save more time. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we even start with our first example, let's go and take a look at how XLOOKUP works. Here on the left, I have my data. It contains an item, size, and value column. And I want to look up the value where the item is equal to echo. So in cell G7, I'll type equals XLOOKUP. We can see the description. It searches a range or an array for a match and returns the corresponding item from a second range or array. I'll enter an opening bracket. And then we have the first argument of lookup value. Well, we want to look up the word echo from cell F7. Then the second argument is lookup array. I want to look up the value from the item column. Then the next argument is return array. And I want to return the value from the value column. I'll close the bracket and calculate. And that is the value of 63, which is the value from the value column where the item is equal to echo. They are all the required arguments of XLOOKUP. Now let's go and take a look at some examples and see how we can take this function even further. We've seen what happens if the lookup value exists in the lookup array, but what if it doesn't exist in the lookup array? Let's go and take a look. Here we're looking up echo and it's returning the value of 63. Now what happens if we change echo to Zulu? Well, Zulu doesn't exist in our table, so our XLOOKUP function returns the hash NA error. Now we can edit our formula and use the if not found argument. So for that argument, I'm going to enter zero. That means that if our value isn't found, it's not going to return the hash NA error. Instead, it's going to return the value of zero. So now if it finds a matching value, it will return that value. But if it doesn't find a matching value, it will return zero. So far, we've seen that we can look up with a single value, but what if you want to look up based on multiple values? Well, here in this scenario, we want to look up where the item is echo and the size is large. So I'll type equals X lookup. For the lookup value, I'm going to select cell F7, then I'll enter an ampersand, and in double quotes, I'll enter a hyphen followed by another ampersand. After that, I can then select cell G7. So my lookup value will be echo hyphen large. Next, for my lookup array, I need to follow the same pattern. I'll start by selecting the item column. I'll then enter an ampersand, a hyphen in double quotes, an ampersand, and then I'll select the size column. So that means that in my array, the first item will be alpha hyphen small. The second item will be bravo hyphen large. The third item will be charlie hyphen medium. So that becomes my lookup array. Then for my return array, I can just select the value column as normal. When we close that bracket and calculate, it returns 44, which is where the item is echo and the size is large. The lookup value inside XLOOKUP is what's known as a scalar argument. It's expecting a single value. So if we provide multiple values, it causes our formula to lift and to spill. Let's go and take a look. Here, I want to look up the values of Echo, Delta, Golf, and Charlie, all from a single formula. So in cell G7, I'll type equals X lookup. Then rather than selecting a single value for the lookup value, I'm going to select the cells F7 to F10. Next, for the lookup array, I'll select the item column. And finally, for the return array, I will select the value column. Now, when we close that and calculate, it returns a value for each of those rows. So that means with XLOOKUP, we can return multiple lookups at the same time. One of the amazing things about XLOOKUP is that it doesn't just return a value. It also returns a cell address. So here I have an XLOOKUP function. We're looking up the value Tuesday from the day column and then returning the value from the value column. This gives us the value of 56. However, if we wrap the cell function around this, so we'll start with cell, and then for the info type, we want to use the address, then the reference will be our XLOOKUP function. And now when we close that function and calculate, it tells us that the value is from cell C7. 
So let's suggest that we want to sum everything from Tuesday to Saturday. Rather than cell, I'm going to start with sum. Now we know that our first XLOOKUP function returns the cell address of C7. After that, I'm going to enter a colon and then include another XLOOKUP function. We want to look up the value in F7 from our day column and return our value. Now this will calculate the cell C11. So in effect, we have sum C7 to C11. I'll close that bracket and calculate and that equals 263, which are the values from Tuesday to Saturday. Let's go and change one of our lookup values. So now let's look up the value Thursday. And as you can see, our total now looks up the values from Tuesday to Thursday. So that's one of the amazing things about XLOOKUP. It doesn't just return the value, it also returns the cell address for that value. So far, all of our examples have been an exact match, but with XLOOKUP, we can also use wildcard characters. So let's suggest that here, we want to look up the values hyphen four, five, six, hyphen from our part number column. I'll start in F7 with equals XLOOKUP and then an opening bracket. To use wildcards, we need to treat them as text. So in double quotes, I'm going to enter an asterisk. Then I'm going to use an ampersand and select cell E7. Next, I'm going to enter another ampersand and enter another asterisk in double quotes. So this means we're going to look up anything that contains hyphen 456 hyphen. There can be any number of characters before or after. For the lookup array, we want to look up in the part number column and the return array will be the store's location. Now we can't use this as it is. We need to enter the match mode to tell Excel to use wildcard characters. Before we get there, we need to enter an if not found. I'm going to enter NA in double quotes. Then we get to the match mode and we can see the options that we have. A wildcard character match is number two. So I'll enter two, then I can close that bracket and calculate. And that now returns the stores location of J6. If I change my code to hyphen 789 hyphen, it now calculates the location as B1. If you want to get more out of Excel, then I suggest you check out our training academy over at excelforthegrid.com forward slash academy. It contains everything you need to save huge amounts of time so that you can make working late a thing of the past. We've seen that XLOOKUP can perform an exact match and also a wildcard match. It can also perform a range match, so it can return a value between a range of values. Here in this example, we're already looking up the value Charlie and we have returned the value of 45. Now we want to look up the discount rate for that value. You can see we have a table that has a threshold of 20, 80 and 50, and there is a discount for each of those levels. Now, if we're performing a default search, these thresholds do not need to be in order. So now for my formula, I'll type equals XLOOKUP, opening bracket, I want to look up the value of 45 from the threshold column and return the discount column. For the if not found, I want to return zero and then we get to the match mode argument. We've already seen the wildcard character match. We can see we also have the exact match or next smaller item and the exact match or next larger item. In this scenario, we only want to give the discount if somebody passes that threshold. So we want to use minus one, which is an exact match or next smaller item. And when we calculate that, it returns 10%, which is the correct value. Now let's change Charlie to golf. The value is 74, so the discount is 20%. If we change it to delta, the value is 85 and the discount is 30%. By default, XLOOKUP searches first to last and returns the first item that it finds, but it can also search last to first and return the first last item that it finds. So in this example, we want to look up the value alpha, but we want to return the last lookup of the value alpha. So to do that, we'll type equals X lookup. Our lookup value is the value in cell F7. We want to look that up from the item column and we want to return the value column. If a value isn't found, we want to return zero and our match mode is going to be an exact match. So that will also be zero. We then get onto the search mode argument. Here we can see that we can search first to last, last to first, or if our table is sorted in ascending or descending order, we can also use a binary search 
for improved performance. In this example, we want to search last to first, so I'll enter minus one and then calculate. And that now returns 32, which is the last instance of alpha. So far in all our examples, the return array has just looked at a single column, but it can look up multiple columns and return an array. So in this example, we want to look up the value Charlie, but return the size and value columns. So I'll type equals X lookup. The lookup value will be the item in F7. We want to look that up from the item column, but we want to return the size and value columns. When we calculate, it now returns both of those columns. The size for Charlie is medium and the value is 45. So with X lookup, we can return multiple values from the return array. XLOOKUP is perfectly happy looking up values that are vertical, but also horizontal. Here in this example, our data is laid out horizontally. So if we want to perform a horizontal lookup, we type equals XLOOKUP. I want to look up the value in B13, which is Q3. We want to look that up from the cells C5 to F5 and return the values from C6 to F6. When we close that and calculate, it returns 80, which is a horizontal lookup. So XLOOKUP is happy working in both directions. If XLOOKUP can return multiple values and it can perform a vertical and horizontal lookup, that means it can perform a two-way lookup. Here, we're going to start by looking up the value Charlie. I'll type equals XLOOKUP, opening bracket. We want to look up the value in G7 and we want to look that up in the item column. Now for the return array, we're going to return the entire table. So that means we get the item, size, part number, and values returned. This is a horizontal array, and we can look up into a horizontal array. So at the start, I'll add another X lookup, and let's suggest that we want the value column returned. So I'm going to select cell H6. For our lookup array, we're going to use the header from our table. Now we can see that value is the fourth item in that header. So therefore, this X lookup is going to return the fourth position. The return array is going to be the previously calculated X lookup. When we close that and calculate, it returns 45, which is where the item is Charlie and where the column is equal to value. If we change Charlie to echo and value to size, it will now return the value of small. So that is the size column where the item equals echo. And that's it. They are our 10 examples of using X lookup. If you like this video, make sure you click to subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And then if you want another Excel video, why not try that one? That's another awesome Excel video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.